welcome to the show. Dr. Audio Zakala speaks and flow 94.9 FM Omoahe. My name is Ginika Oloha. It's exactly 11 minutes past the hour of 10 o'clock on this dial. You're welcome to the show. <laughs> My name is Guinea Kaulua, like I've said already, and I have the regular that I will be doing the show with, Honorable Maduko Koro. He is the Southeast Media aide to Dr. Jezokal. Honorable, good morning. Welcome. Good morning, Guinea and good morning, the good people of Abia State, God's own state. Okay, let's start this way. If you see in Abia State, finally, they've thrown their weight behind their, your principal, Dr. Jezokal, on his travels. Uh, the chairman of APC in the state, Donati Swampa, addressed the press two days ago. I said the party is strongly behind Dr. Jezokal. Well, uh, I won't, I won't uh, subject my reasoning to the word used, finally, because uh, it has been on the pipeline because uh, the chairman of our great party in Abia State, mm. uh, Honorable Donati Swampa, uh, has been uh, on the road and been on air uh, for a while, you know, going from here to uh, Abuja and then coming back from Abuja. And he discussed the, uh, the, the uh, ordeal of my boss with me. And uh, he also said that he was going to make time to speak to uh, the press, which uh, eventually he did. I'm happy. I'm very happy about it. It's not that uh, 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 the party forgot to do what they're supposed to do, the necessary thing, but he's just doing it at the right time. You know, we have a legal matter here. It's not something anybody can dabble into so you have to come from the perspective of saying this is the leader of APC not only in Abia State we can comfortably say the leader of APC in Southeast so what uh, uh, Swankpa, Honorable Donatus Swankpa has done you know I call him the philosophy chairman uh, is, is, is at the right time and uh, the party the great party APC uh, has has come out en masse to feel for the man that shakes the society, the man that moves the wind. And that is Dr. Ojo the distinguished senator. So we're happy what he has said. Uh, I'm waiting to read in the papers what, uh, how he addressed the press. But I know that without doubt, without any iota of doubt, that my party has been behind my boss. Because uh, despite the fact you say that one person cannot make a party, but one person can have a, 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 a serious, significant uh, influence on any organization, in any polity, or any uh, uh, gathering. So that is Ojo Zakalo. People are not people are not happy that he has not been with them, but he's going to be with them soon, you know. So uh, that is the issue about APC supporting uh, or throwing their weight behind my boss. He has been there. There is no question about that. Ojo Zakalo is the man of the people. Okay, he also uh, mentioned the fact that uh, the party has experienced some kind of setback going uh, by the travels of uh, Dr. Joseph Carlo as the party leader in uh, the state, uh, that uh, his travels actually is causing the, the party a whole lot of uh, distress. Yes, uh, you know, it's just like if you have a father in a family or your mom or the, whoever that is, that is the breadwinner in a family, and when that person is not around, uh, you are going to uh, feel uh, beat it down, you know, and uh, this is what has been happening with us now. People have come to show that Ojo Kahlo is being loved. Even those folks that don't agree with Ojo Kahlo, uh, despite the fact that majority of them that are now in our camp, uh, sympathizing, empathizing with my boss, uh, are those that have not even seen him before, but it's just on hearsay basis. But I tell you, there is nobody, nobody in Abia, nobody in Nigeria that has uh, uh, heard about Ojo Zokalo that will not love Ojo Zokalo. When you meet the man, you will be like, is this this Ojo Zokalo? No, it can be him. Because you're going to be looking at Ojo Zokalo because of his size, the demeanor of what he is in the society. You think that he's going to be a man that is full of himself. But Ojo Zokalo is, is, is when, just like when Jesus came, he said, I come not for the rich. I come for the poor. I come for the sinner. Ojo Zokalo is uh, a man that uh, sustains his energy talking to the downtrodden. That is why when you see every logo that we have say, keep hope alive. And he's the only man that has come out to say, keep hope alive. And he, he, the faith in him is carrying him on. And I, I am happy. My, my boss is, uh, uh, is healthy. My boss is, uh, is even looking better than he was before because of what he believes in. Ojo Zokalo uh, has so much faith in God. 
And that is why things don't perturb him. Not that as we as beings, that we are not going to run into some bump or another at any time in our life. But Dr. Ojok had the distinguished senator that people love. Uh, he's okay. And when he comes out, like I said before, this is going to be the biggest welcome after Dim or the Megumjiko return from Abidjan. Okay, he also said something. Uh, you know, we are just looking at the the statement made by the party chairman, Donald Tusmampa. He said something that OUK is a special kind of, it's a special breed, you know, kind of, that he has, these kind of people normally go through some kind of travail, which will make them stronger. Do you agree to that part? Of course, I have you repeatedly said it. I even have named a lot of folks uh, that have been leaders in the world today. They went through the same thing. Even uh, 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 our former president, he, he, there was some, some time that he was uh, 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 deprived of his freedom, you know. But he, he came out stronger uh, uh, put Nigeria to the level that we, we had to become as at that time, mm. you know. But you see, Oji Ozokalo uh, is a man that has given his life for the betterment of the people, for the uplift of the man and woman on the street. And everybody knows that. That is why the charisma, the charm, the class that he has uh, makes him unique. Ojo Kahlo is a unique breed. You know, that's why I keep saying that you need to appreciate the attributes that we all have in ourselves. Whether it be a man, whether it be a woman, whether it even be a, a prodigy of a child. We have unique things embedded in us. And we begin to, when we begin to respect those things, then the world will be a better place. Because I know, as you are Gineka, if you are a mason uh, or you are a carpenter, and uh, I don't respect you, then uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, furnish my house with your furniture. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, so it, there is a particular gift. Of course, need I okay. need you. Because that's why the world is a symbolic place. People don't understand that. There are so much spaces for all of us to occupy. That is why people uh, that are negatively minded, they don't move forward in life. Because they are not thinking ahead of what to better the people and better themselves. What they are thinking about how to put somebody down, how to bring this man down, bring this woman down, and he gives them joy. And you, we watch many people that don't have liberal mind. Things don't go well with them. Most of them don't even uh, they, they, what we call social introverts. They, 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 to associate with people in the public becomes a problem. Oji gets his filler. He gets his strength from the people. You know, that is the unique thing about him. A lot of folks have talked about uniqueness. Uh, Professor uh, the Eze in, uh, in uh, Umunuchi, I've forgotten his name. When we went there, the prof said uh, that one thing people need to understand is to respect the gift that God has given Ojo Zokala. Ojo Zokala has a special gift. And Nigerians will, um, will, will enjoy that gift when the time comes. Our black women, black men all over the world will enjoy the gift that God has given Ojo Zokalo because he's going to spread that gift for Tom, Dick, and Harry. And that is this distinguished senator. And that's why he remained a man that came to the Senate and the Senate changed. And you're going to see uh, Ojo Zokalo come back swinging. Everybody is going to be waking up uh, that Ojo Zokalo has brought the Senate on their toes. The Senate now is an enjoyable place. After Oyi of Oyi, uh, uh, my very good uh, mentor, Dr. Uh, 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 Chubo Kadibo. Chubo Kadibo was a man. He, he shook the house. Uh, he has the intellect. And Ojiso Kahlo has the class and the, charima, uh, uh, the charm and the, and, the, and the charisma to turn things around. And that's why we know him that the first time he came into the Senate, everybody, they were alive to see Ojiso Kahlo. And when you hear order, that is Ojiso Kahlo, the chief whip. Of the Senate, ninth Senate of the Federal Republic. Now, election. let's talk about 2023. You agree with me that the clock for 2023 election has started ticking. Now, your party chairman, the uh, APC in Addis State, Donald Tusmanta, he said that the position of the governor in your party will be thrown open. No zoning this time. You know, we talked about the issue of Adia Central having their own towns, uh, Adia North, and now Adia South. Now, he said, in APC, there's nothing like zoning ahead of 2023. That if you feel uh, you have what it takes to become the governor, you come out and contest. But we know that zoning has become part of us, especially in other states. How do you think that is going to work? I don't think that it will, it will make any difference. Uh, you know, uh, when you vote, you don't tell people who you're going to vote for. So, for instance, in our party, and as the chairman has aptly made it, uh, uh, assuming 
that uh, people would have sympathy for somebody uh, uh, like Guinea Koloha from his squad and they say, we're going to vote for Guinea Koloha, but I keep it within myself. I remember, if you go back, way, way back, uh, uh, there was a time uh, Dankov uh, came out. There was open space, but it was said in PDP at that time that this thing has been zoned to a particular area. But they say, no, no zoning. Everybody go to the field. And at the end of the day, Abhi had not had it. Dr. Oji Uzokalo. So this is where politics happen. You can't close your eyes and say, okay, we are zoning this thing to uh, 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 constituency A, constituency B, constituency C. But in political consciousness, if you feel that we have qualified people coming from Abia that need to become the next governor of Abia State, so be it. We have our constitution, we have our rules and regulations that we follow. Remember, we are going to have primaries. Then we go to the field and let the, the, the best man win. You know, for right now, that he has made a statement, he made it because he's too early. Probably, probably, politics is, 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 is uh, dynamic. You see, by the time we are getting to 2021, 22, a lot of things, the equation might change. That is your politics. Or that is the, the, the dynamics of, of uh, as a sense of governance. When people uh, are allowed to ex express uh, 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 their, their rights. And this is where the thing comes to play. So we are waiting. The, the chairman has spoken and uh, the, the, the party was, is there. The, the, the structure is there. So anybody that feels that he or she is qualified to run, you can stop you from running. But if following the political conscience, consciousness of us, that this uh, election that we're going to have in 2020 should go to a particular area, so be it. But, but, but let's look at this issue of zoning. Should zoning be an issue where, in a state where good governance should uh, take the center state? Why must people be good? Why political? Why must political party be looking at uh, the issue of zoning? Okay, if you are okay, take for instance, if you say let's zone to Abia North, and when you look at uh, people that are coming out from Abia North, there's no credibility in all the candidates or aspirants. Should you still go ahead because it's, it has been zoned to that particular place? You see, that is the bane of Nigerian politics. You know, uh, when we begin to look at it from that perspective to say, let the best man, the best woman win, irrespective of where you're coming from. As long as we have looked at your credentials, as long as we have gone to the debate, then a lot of people will hear you out and know that you have a serious vision. It's not the same when you, when you get me into power, I'm going to give you lights, I'm going to give you water, I'm going to give you... Know, those, those are inundating things. You know, what we are doing now is to looking at your profile, what you have achieved before coming into politics, what you intend to do for the betterment of the people. If what you have as your vision can touch the lives of the people, and then you'll be able to sell yourself. It's like, it's like a debate. Who, who, if you make good and salient points, you win the debate. So where will you go out there? Telling people what you do, what they are, they are not used to hearing. You know, there is this Ronan thing in making this statement. When you elect me, I will do this. The same thing you hear. I will fix your road. The same thing you hear. Give us new narrative that will touch the lives of the people. Because that's what governance is all about. It's not merely infrastructure. Infrastructure, yes, we, we, we have to have all those things. But that is why I keep saying that in governance, if you know that governance is not, it's not about a political party, it's not about individual being there as governor, mm -hmm. but if you look at it, that this is a continuous process where you work for the betterment of the site to create a new society. The next person comes and says, oh, Mr. A stopped at this. Let me continue at this. But in Nigeria, because it's always, ah, no, 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 no. I'm not going to touch this uh, uh, project again. I have my new project. It doesn't work that way. You see, that is why if you look at even an Abia, you can see there are a lot of projects that have been abandoned. There are a lot of projects that, have been abandoned, that, that are not even touching the lives of the people. Go to uh, the, the one they, they wanted to say, they said it was amusement park for us. Look at it. It's abandoned. The residential, residential buildings were erected there. Where we supposed to, they said the families were creating a place where families can go and relax. And then uh, conventions can be held, uh, uh, rallies can be held there. You pay and do whatever you want to do. But the, to bring in families together, I thought it was a good idea. The plan was all good and dandy. But look at it, it has fallen on the, on the wayside. The grass has taken over there. Then look at timber shit. Look at timber. The grass are there. Criminals are harboring over there. Nobody talks about that. If those estates were 
targeted towards the downtrodden. One bedroom, one bedroom to civil servant, one, one bedroom. Then uh, it, it would have been a, 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 a it would have been a, a, a big thing. So that is that's what we're saying. So infrastructure is not basically it, but what you can do to touch the lives of the people. So we need to begin to question when Ikbazun leaves, what is he going to tell us that he has done? We're going to look at it. You know, that's what, what I'm talking about, governance. You know, the projects that were led by the previous administration before he took over, what happened to them? Minister of Lands, Minister of Works. Are poor people going to live there? How much are those buildings cost? How much do they cost? Those are the issues we need to, we need to ask ourselves. And then you talk about people, touching the lives of people. You talk about saying, wait, when I get into power, the first thing I will do is to pay salary. If you look at Enugu State, Enugu State, uh, uh, Enugu State uh, 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 has developed the man said, I will pay salary within this period of time, within this step of day. Uh, uh, but he did the same thing. Why can't we pay salaries? Why can't we? What was wrong with paying salaries? Clear up salaries, clear up pensioners, because these are over. And I keep saying, everybody that is a political appointee, most of them, they have fathers that served in the government. They have mother that have, they have sisters. My eldest sister has not been paid her pension. A lot of folks have not been paid pension. He retired from the re state? Yes, now my, my a, a senior, senior nursing officer. Retired. You know, she has not been paid pension. So we look at all those things. If I were to be governor, when I get in there, I won't touch any security vote. I won't touch anything. How much, how much do we owe uh, 77? How much do we owe pensioners? I will clear off that debt. Which judges or Carlo did? What the senator was governor, he did all those things. His governance is so easy if you have vision. But if you get in there by force, by any means necessary, you get in there. Boy, you're going to meet a water loop. Because there are some things you're going to see when you get into power. You won't believe that it does exist. Governance is so easy. Create your vision. Use people. Because the voice of the people is the voice of God. The people that voted you to power, those are the people you need to touch. How many, how many, how many industries have we tried to establish in the 17 local government? Do you know that if we establish, establish one industry in this, each of the 17 local government, Abia will be a, a safe haven. How do we do that? PPPI, the public private initiative. When you do partnership initiative, when you do all those things, bring investors. How do you bring investors? Create an environment, conducive environment for them to move. And that is why when I was talking about security and I said, it's not a question of opening Homeland Security Ministry. It's a question of calling the essays to order. The essays from each community in the city local governments, in each very local government. You get, a, you get a, a, what they call it, uh, the, the vigilantes are there. Those vigilantes that are there, those are the people we need to use. From vigilante to Bakasi. From Bakasi to uh, uh, police. So when you do all those things, you see what will happen. You know, then people will be safe. Because the vigilantes in the villages, they grab somebody who they believe is, is, a, is a criminal or somebody has gone against the laws of the land. You turn that individual over or individuals over to Bakasi. Bakasi then takes it up from there and go to the police and submit to the police. And then the law enforcement officer will take care of that. So you don't overburden the police force. That is what we are doing today. You can't expect policemen to go to Zita. And drive from Ozitem to Bende every day. It's not only Ozitem. We have a Tumbuzo that has boundary with uh, uh, Aqua Ibum folks. Then you, you, you have a uh, go to uh, uh, Umunochi, go to Iskwato, all these places. So those are the things. Where it's a very simple thing, a very simple mathematics. Create youths that are vigilant because the youths in the village, they know the robbers, the criminals. They can fish them out. Or create an incentive, say, if you are a criminal, we are going to give you amnesty. Turn in your guns, turn in your weapons. And then we will help to empower you to create skills within your, your life so that you'll be able to be not only for your family, but for the society at large. That is the problem that we have because we have what we call a, a lackluster vision. We are visionless. Everybody goes in there. They continue the same political uh, gimmicks. You know, we are going to build you a, a, a plane. We are going to do this. You, and we are not seeing the airplane. We can't see the airplane. These are what we call white elephants. Okay, the show is still Dr. Audrey's or Carlos Speaks of Flow 94.9 FM. I still have here with me the Southeast Media aid to Dr. Audrey's or Carl, Honorable Madikokoro. My name is Ginika Olwana. We'll take a short break. When we come back, 
but she'll continue. Stay with us. At Flow 94.9 FM, we've got conducive and well-secured environment for business. High-tech video studio, a state-of-the-art production studio. You can also listen live on www.flow949fm.com and watch our videos on YouTube at Flow FM TV. Flow 94.9 FM, not just radio, but a complete broadcasting house. All right, welcome back to the show. It's still Dr. Joseph Carlos speaks and Flow 94.9 FM. All right, Bo, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much. Jenica, there is something I wanted to say before you went on break. Okay. I want to use this opportunity again to thank everybody uh, that has been very supportive of uh, our senator, uh, Ebly, representing Abia North Senatorial Zone, Dr. Ojo Zokalo, member of the Niger, uh, uh, Reverend uh, Dr. Sally, I went to Israel uh, praying for him. Dr. Sally, we want to thank you. I want to thank uh, uh, Reverend Mr. Jimam Olakalo for holding strong and holding all the uh, Ojo Zokalo campaign groups together. Uh, we're praying and sending our prayers every day, fasting every day. Also, want to thank uh, uh, our great matriarch. Uh, uh, Elder Mrs. Uh, Chief Mrs. Uh, 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 Oji, uh, you know, or the Konamba, uh, Mrs. Oji is a powerful woman, uh, it's a woman that God bless that brought Oji Zokalo to this world, and she does not joke with her, her, her kids. Uh, Elder Chief Mrs. Inis Zokalo, God, may God continue to sustain you, give you health, uh, you are brilliant, you are intelligent, God bless you so much, you know, you are a good mother. Uh, we want to thank you immensely for everything you do. And that's why reality organization today, we are out there. Uh, they, we are going to meet today. The reality organization worldwide, we're going to meet today. Uh, you know, to also do some good things spiritually for Dr. Ojos of Halo. And there is nothing we have in our hands but a say prayer to God. So I want to thank all reality coordinators in Abia State. I want to thank reality market. I want to thank uh, reality prayer network. Uh, the executives of reality organization worldwide, I thank you all for your support. All just Okalo movement for your support. All just Okalo fans for your support. You know, it's, it's, it's very, it's very, uh, very touching that you people are showing the love you have for Oji Ozokalo. May God continue to bless every Abian. May God continue to bless every Nigerian that have been calling those in diaspora. My friends in diaspora have been calling and wishing Oji the best of life. Even as I was coming to the studio this morning by factory road, those hawkers, they were when they see the sticker, they start yelling, this is our man, oh, this is our man. And it gives me joy that Oji Zokalo is loved by the people, by the grace of God. In his infinite mercy, Jai Jare, Oji will come out. As soon as the senator comes out here, there will be peace everywhere. Okay, um, let's still go back to the statement made by the APC chairman in our state, Donald Tuswamp, uh, he said that the party is beginning to welcome new members. In fact, that some people have rejoined the party. But there's this, uh, you know, acrimony here and there, that some people who left the party are rejoining through the back door. How true is that? Well, uh, that is the, the, the insulation that we had. Uh, I know there were some uh, big folks that uh, momentarily went on Saturday due to uh, personal interest or whatever that they had that never tabled before the ESCO, uh, they never brought us in the open to say, this is our family, we have to stick together. But they did what they, they, they had to do at that time, which might not look good in the eyes of the proper person, in the eyes of those that, that, that stuck out their necks in the trenches for the war. You see, you can't you can be a general and then you fight and run back. A general had to stay in front, you know, and then they say, either I kill them, or you kill me, but you can't kill my troops. So as they are come now, some of them that are joining, but I know that all these big things will be settled. Yes, people have their grievances against those that are coming back. And you know, it's not easy for you to come back. Because you have to go back to your world again. If you have left the party, you have to go back to the world. But I, what, what excites me is that even we are getting stronger now because people are joining us. Look at... Uh, 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 Ambassador, Ambassador Bishop uh, Emeka Wangpa from Isia Langwa. The man, the man left the party, but he came openly, declared that I am coming back in full strength for APC. Almost more than 1,500 people followed him from Abga, everywhere. 
So you are going to see the tsunami effect that is going to happen when people are going to rethink twice to know that the most viable political party in Abia State is APC. That is where you get the intelligent folks. That is where you get people that you can sit with and eat with. Not people that don't know Dili. What we are trying to say is that we are creating a serious structure that in 2023, you cannot beat us. We got everything. We got the facts now. We have so many things that we are going to unleash against our opponents. Okay, but let's look at the issue of uh, foundation. Yeah. You know, you know, before election, say a few months to the election, you see foundations here and there springing up. Some people pushing for foundation. Eventually, it will collapse into a political organization and campaign office and all that to come up. Why would they need to wait till a few months to the election? Why not start it now? If at all you have a foundation and you want to impact life, why don't you start now? Why would you have to wait? So that is so easy all about. If you check now, no political activity is going on. Nobody wants to be identified with the people, especially the, those ones at the grassroots. Yes. But few months to election, all of them will come from nowhere and start setting up foundation. You see, I like what you just said. You see, what you just said now is also something that a lot of people out there are hearing. The grassroots are those people that vote. The elites don't vote. The people that vote are those people in the countryside. And now, you see, that's how you're going to know people that are not real. If I start up a foundation today, doing before election, about about uh, a year to election, then you start a foundation and get all these big billboards about your foundation that does not exist. If you are serious, your foundation should come even before political parties exist. Why do you decide to form a foundation? Because you want to do things for people. You have the people that you want to turn their lives, whichever way you want to do that. If you have foundation. It doesn't stop you from continuing that foundation. Then within that foundation, there will be a structure, a pseudo political structure that you can use to go to war. But the foundation stays. But most of them use that foundation after politi after election. They're gone. You don't see their names again. You see, they come up with these big, big names. And then when you see it, you say, ah, who is this person? And you get excited. But they, they are not real. They are not real. They are just like uh, wind. They are like cuckoo. You soon as you come up, anything goes, they're gone. So that's what is happening. So anybody who is seriously minded about touching the lives of people, you have to have your structure now. You have to identify yourself with some kind of organization. You might not identify yourself with any political organization, but time will come, then you decide to jump into any political group. But form, form a structure that people will know you about. Just like Bishop Wangpa did, look at him. He just did empowerment. And people testify that this man is really good. He has been doing this for many years. His own money. He doesn't need anybody's help. So if Wangpa comes today in Isia Alangwa and say he wants to fight for something, people already know him because he does not stay in, in, the, in, the, in the urban area. He stays in the countryside. And not only that, he's also using the spirit of God through his church to empower people. And that goes to send a, a statement to all, all other ch church, churches and other uh, groups that call themselves faith-based organizations. It's not the tithe that I pay. It's not the offering that I give. Is what you think about me as my pastor. If you get all these churches in Nigeria today and they create uh, uh, farm settlements and they create empowerment programs, I think that poverty will be eliminated. That is the problem we have. But they are busy trying to get their own. How can a pastor pastoring so many people is driving a uh, uh, Lamborghini and I'm suffering? I'm suffering, crying every day to go to church to give you that 20 naira or 50 naira or 100 naira. And then they say, the, the, when you go to church, they say, ah, today is a pastor's day. I love my pastor day. I love my pastor. You give them chicken. You give them goats. You give them yam. They go and eat. Have I eaten? How many poor people in the church have eaten that day? Those are what the churches need to turn around. Where will church have to change their own narrative to know that people go to church because that's the only way you get protected. Either you are protected spiritually or you are protected or otherwise. That's why we go to churches because we want to find solace with our Almighty God. So that's it. While I'm praying to God and I'm not eating and I faint and I'm gone, nobody will talk about me. So churches need to uh, uh, rearrange their perspective about worshiping. There is nothing wrong with tithes. Tithes is a personal thing. There is nothing wrong with offering. But all I'm saying, I don't want to see my pastor getting fatter and fatter when I'm getting thinner and thinner. It doesn't, it doesn't bid way for that. 
So you see all, most of them, they are rich folks. Look at the, the, their cathedral. The, the money fall from heaven. It is your money, my money. You understand what I'm saying? The schools that are being built by a lot of churches, how many, how many congregants in their churches go to those schools? Let us be real. Let's be real. So that is the point that I try to make. So people like Bishop Wangpa, that who is, who is a, a, a bishop, a man of God, and he said, I am using what God has given me to give to the, back to the people. That will make me go to the church and go and pray. Because I know the man, the man preaching, the man teaching me, is teaching me well and preaching to me well. Give me spiritual food. And if not, that thing will be added on to me. Let's look at the issue of sellout, especially in politics. Yeah. You know, your chairman talked about the issue of sellout. When we ask, why is it that uh, your candidate, your governorship candidate in 2019, if actually he saw that, we've seen this thing happen often. Uh, if you check your campaign during the 2019, it wasn't that vibrant. It wasn't vibrant to attract anybody to vote for your, for your party, the APC in, in the state, even with all the enthusiasm from the people and all that. But it appears that you people sold out, uh, especially uh, during that particular election. How are you going to address this particular issue in 2023 now that you are welcoming more members into the party, like your chairman said? Well, uh, I think that the chairman will be in a better position to respond to this question. But all I can say, as a party faithful, is that uh, we know ourselves. APC is reorganizing itself for a better fight. That better fight, you are going to see it in the next one year. I will just say, wait till uh, Senator Jesus of Halo comes out. You are going to see a different APC. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, now let's go to Imo State. The debacle there, the political uh, debacle in Imo State. Yes. Two days ago, the Supreme Court nullified the election of former Governor Ikeji Oha yes. and uh, said that Pope Uzadema actually won that election. He has been sworn in. Now APC is back to South East. Yes. Is it a boost to, to your party? Oh, it's, of course, it's a very big boost. Uh, you know that. Uh, when I tell people that God exists, some people doubt it. You know, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not religious, but I try to be as most spiritual inclined, the most spiritual affected than most of us. Now, if you believe there is God, you can't serve God and mammon. Either you serve God or you serve mammon. Now, what is actually happening is that God spoke in Imo, and people doubted that. And look at just what happened. At the end of the day, we took Imo State. And then you see also think, something I want to let people know. Your name, your name affects you. Whether you like it or not, naturally, mystically, names affect somebody. You can never see somebody who, who is answering a Omenazo uh, 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 instead of Omenihu. Names affect people in life. Check your name. So when that man hope, who's the man? And a man of God opens his mouth and says, this is what I have seen. Imo people, stop crying. You will cry no more. Hope is coming. And now the man has won this election. It's good for APC. It's all good for the polity too. Because now, what is happening in Nigeria is that we're going to have staggered election. You can't have election one day as we usually have it before. So when Imo people will be voting, the time they'll be voting won't be the time the Abia people will be voting. No, but, 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 staggered election is the best thing that will happen to Nigerian politics. But if you talk about... Uh Staggered election. Yes. We saw what happened with Kogi. If Kogi was also part of the general election without being involved in this staggered election, like you said, uh, don't you think we would have had a very smooth election no, in Kogi State? Not, you see, in presidential system of governance, we are copying American system, but we are not copying it right. American system, you don't have you don't have election one day. Different states, Virginia might be voting today, it's not the same way people from Alaska. Be doing. But those they people are all staggered. Are Not advanced, but you are copying them. You are copying presidential system of government. That's American system. Our constitution is patterned after American constitution. So we are copying them, but we are not copying it right. If I want to speak like Guinea, I have to truly come out and say, I will speak like, so that when somebody sees me, say, ah, this guy talks like Guinea, because I practice you. I go to the mirror, I look at myself, I walk like Guinea, I talk like Guinea, I might not eat like Guinea, but I want to be like you. So that is what we're saying. Staggered election politically. Every political society knows that this is the best thing that happened in Nigeria. So let's have different days, different time period for election. And it will be better for us. So that the, the, the law enforcement officer will not be caged in that day. 
that one day we're going to hold election all over Nigeria. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. So uh, we are changing. America is 200 and something years old and we only what? 50 something. So we are moving. We are, we're going to get there and it's going to be a better place for us. The political consciousness of the people has been awoken. People and we know those who are charlatans. We know those who are deceived people. We know those who are not serious coming into politics. Soon as they come to run for election, and probably the money comes from the center to be distributed. Soon as they grab their own, they're gone. They, you won't see them. Even the day they will vote, voting day, they will, they will fail to be sick. That is the problem you have in Nigeria because of stomach infrastructure. That's what we're suffering from. Now, don't you think it's because people have lost confidence in government or in Nigeria? That's what Maybe we're saying, you go to vote, you stay in the sun for a very long time after the whole thing. Probably your vote may not even count. Mm. If eventually they declare somebody the winner, the person will not even meet the yearnings of the people. Don't you think so that's things, why things are, things are changing now? People are, are becoming political conscious. The youth that don't like to, you know, apathy is set in into our youth. But those things have changed because if you look at the university days now, what we're also going to do. Uh, well, I'm planning on that with our foundation, the uh, uh, Ojuzo Foundation, on the educational side. We're going to be visiting schools to interact with student union government so that we will hear from them and then make them, let them know that they need to participate in elections. This country belongs to each and every one. The youths are growing up to take over. Tell them, make them feel that politically they are viable. You know, it's not a question of giving somebody uh, a weapon or giving somebody an... Uh, later on, the, the resultant effect is what hurts us politically. But in Nigeria, we are changing in our dimensional politics. So every one of us, I ask, let us remain optimistic. Because 2023 is not going to be 2019. We are still staying in Imo states. Now the governor, on assumption of office yesterday, he made a statement by making sure he said he was going to prove all the finances of the state government yeah. from 2010 to date. Now, this was the same thing the former governor started with. Is it all about probing or governance of the people? Yes, that's a very good question. Well, you know, uh, probing is all right. Well, probing can mean anything. The word probe. I want to look into our financial strength. I want to see where the, what I expect Yedio had to do is to call a whole post of them, sit with him parley with him, irrespective of the political divide, and say, this is what I had when I came in, and this is what I'm leaving for you, as I'm doing. You see, amicably, it's just because we are, you know, we, we, the bitterness, the rancor in us, doesn't, doesn't give us the clear reasoning for us to see. That you are in APP, APC, or uh, uh, you are in PDP, or in ABGA, or you are SDP, it doesn't make any difference. The difference is the people that voted you in there. So probing, I'm looking at it, I'm not the spokesperson, but probing, I'm looking at it, I want to look at what is on board before, so that Ndimo will know eh, what I'm I, 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 I going to be working with. So there is nothing with probing, except when you go into that probing and you make it personal. But I don't think... Of course, we saw what happened. Yes, and he made, a, he, made a, he, made a, he made a lot of blunders. It was like a personal thing between him and uh, uh, Rochas uh, Okorocha. But I don't think that Hope Uzorema will have time to that. Because this is a mandate that God said, you will bring hope in Dimo. And you are going to use APC to do it. And he has done it. Okay, let's see if we can open the phone lines now, um, the numbers to call. But before we do that, we must uh, inform our listeners, please, when you're calling in, no personal attacks, just uh, call in, make your contribution based on what we've, uh, the issues we've raised on this particular uh, program. The numbers to call are 080-8182-6949. I take that again. 080-8182-6949 or 0811-605-2949. The SMS line is also there. You can send your SMS on 090 six five one zero eight two eight nine but honorable before we go to the front line let's look at this uh, issue now the issue of this amortizing it's taking everywhere some uh, when you look at uh, nigeria as a whole some states they've adopted their own uh, little security just to protect the people in those various uh, states but in southwest it's a collective thing it's no it's no longer a state thing mm -hmm. it's a regional thing now the federal government has declared that particular security act is illegal. Don't you think uh, Southwest they've had their own share of this uh, banditry, 
uh, headsmen attack and all that. Is it not the best way to protect the people? Yes, it is. I, I, I believe that in Abia we have what we call the, the uh, Bakasi, uh, which was started by my boss when he was governor. And Bakasi metamorphosed uh, into an arm of security force. And they have been doing things uh, the way it's supposed to be, except that they are not being taken good care of. But I know that now that security is in the bon, 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 everybody will wake up to security. So I believe in what they are doing in Southwest, and I think we'll also do the same. And then Nigeria will be a better place. It doesn't mean that we're not going to use the police, but these people will help the police. That's what they are like vigilantes. That's what they are. So nobody should be scared. Okay. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Yeah. Hello? Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Hello, hello, good morning, Jerica. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Honorable Madu Kokoro. Good morning. I'm going to see the better Happy New Year, sir. Same to you. Go ahead, Chidebe. Yes, uh, I want to take on that, uh, uh, homosexual issue. Okay. Uh, I keep saying it that it's very, very important to know that if presidency or whoever from the presidency are telling us that it's illegal, are they trying to tell us that killing people anyhow in the country is legal? Because if you look at the, 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 the uh, brain behind this homosexual issue, it's to make sure that the Southwest have a very high level of security uh, uh, men on ground to to guide their place. Like in Southeast, I believe that states are doing theirs. Like in Asia, we have our homeland security. We probably have our vacancy working hand in hand with the police. In Enugu State, they have their uh, forest guide and all the rest of them. It's to make sure that we will tight every loose end to make sure that security is the first thing before okay. any other thing. Thank you. Thank you and God bless you. All right. Thank you, Chidebe. Hello. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Okay, the last that. Uh, honorable. You know, like I was saying, mm. you see, th those are things that we were talking about. This, this security arm, this uh, Amito Kun that uh, mm. Oji Zokalo started it way, way back. We're talking about 20 years ago. Oji is sees ahead of time. Dr. Oji Okalo, when he became governor, created the vigilante. Mm. And the vigilante were doing very well. People were scared again to steal. You know, so now that the, what we need to do is to go back to what Oji Zokalo did. When he was governor, in, in, in bringing Bakasi, take good care of Bakasi so that Bakasi will in pursue with the law enforcement officer. Bakasi doesn't have court. Bakasi doesn't have a, a, a incarceration center. What Bakasi does until today, that the way they can they turn over to the police. What the Yorubas are doing now, Ojizo Kalo started that way, 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 way back through Bakasi. So what we need to do is to revitalize Bakasi. What you gave to um, uh, um, you know, Bakasi is extended even to Anambra. I, because it's tended to Enugu state. You know, so that's what we need to do. This is, this is, is not new. This thing is not new. All Jews of color have done it. And Bakasi is being guided. Bakasi is like being guided by, 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 by law. At their state. Heart of assembly passed the, into law. So Bakasi people need to be given money. Need to be given vehicles. Need to be uh, uh, patrolling the streets. Bakasi can do the job with the police. Turn over, so you have the police people do their job. Police cannot be everywhere that. Even talking. in America, it happened in Israel. We have vigilante in America. Uh, still talking neighborhood about. watch. Yes. We call it neighborhood watch. So when you catch somebody, turn it over to the police because Bakasi cannot take anybody to court. So that is what we say. Help the police, help yourself. That is all we said. Help the police to help yourself. When you help the police by creating vigilante, like Ojiz Okalu did when he was governor, and now we're still using Bakasi now, but we're not do doing anything. You know, that's what I'm telling people. It's vision. Okay, look at EC Gate. You know, EC Gate, we were scared of EC Gate because it was very insecure. Hulums were everywhere. And now they have done what I like it has, what it has done. Yes, kicking them out. There's no problem with that. But did you plan where you will put them? Look at now, go to EC Gate. They have not started planting trees. There's what to be planting trees. Use the power wire to barricade that place and give job to you so that they will clear up that place and make it look, look better. They have abandoned it. You will see that in the next couple of weeks, are people every night they go and thread there. They go and say, you see people selling uh, gaddy eggs. You see people selling cola nuts. You see people selling bitter cola, ice cream, right there. Everybody, that place needs to be neat, cleared. Plant trees, that's why I talk about vision. They don't have vision. You know, somebody can go on air and talk about what they are doing. Now you have chased the people out. So what? What have you done? 
That place is still desolate. And you are building block. Go and see how much they are saying. Why building block? Plant trees in the ecosystem. Be environmental uh, friendly. And you are telling me you are, you are, you are changing ECG. ECG has not been changed. ECG is still ECG. Okay, I think we've, uh, we, I think we've, uh, we are done for today. Uh, the Dr. Only, Dr. Carlos speaks on the only thing that I, I want to say, Gineka, mm. is again, uh, people, I want to thank you guys, everybody that have been praying for the distinguished senator. Uh, it is not by his making, it's by God's design. Whatever Oji Uzo Kalo, the distinguished senator, gonna be tomorrow, it's not by the effort of any man. It's not by the effort of any woman, but it's by the grace of God. And MG Uhara say, Ndabia not, Isikweto, Umunochi, Arochiku, Ndebendelo, Ndabrebando Afia, Abreba, Abreba, Abibudmez, Nahai Chirunku, Olunu no, Iberelo, Ndibere no, your son is gonna come out. Our son, our brother, our father, our uncle, He's coming out, and uh, everywhere we stand still when Ojiz Okalo comes out. I am going to come on this air and tell people, thank you, because the Lord is good. I can see everything turning around for the betterment of Ndabia, for the betterment of Ndibo. May God Almighty continue to bless Ndibo, Ndibo, Ndrara, in the name of mighty Jesus. All right, amen. That's uh, the South East Media A to Dr. Ojiz Okalo, Honorable Mad Kukuru. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Ginika. Show. Thank you. My name is Ginika Olwan Hatel. Next week, like I will always say, please do stay out of trouble. Good morning. Yeah.